To get started changing out your contact page, the first thing you're going to want to do is change out the background color of this header. Just as in the other pages, what you're going to do is go to the blue section settings, click the section settings and click uh, background in the content area, and then you'll input the color that you want for the background settings that matches your, um, your business colors. So once you have that, click the save button. And to change out these buttons here, what you're going to do is you're going to highlight each button individually if you um, just want to change out the text that's there. So uh, if you wanted to change this uh, to, a, these are basically buttons that take your site visitors to different areas of your website. So they're basically menu buttons within um, your website. So the uh, frequently asked questions button, the link is set to go uh, to the services page where the frequently asked questions are at. And so the way that you would put that in is that you would put in your website, dot com slash services page so services and then you would put the identifier that's on there so i have it set for the frequently asked questions to be the faq so that's how that link would look now if you don't want that button there to go to the frequently asked questions uh, section or you don't have one you can simply just delete this box here same with the services and the get started but if you wanted to change the way that it looked and you would click on the design button and click on the button. The only real changes to the custom style on here that's not set to default would be that it has a um, icon next to it. But you can change the button text size here by going up or down, change the button text color. Um, the button background, we have it set uh, to default. That's why it's not showing there. But if you wanted to change it, it would show up there. And then if I hit that refresh button, it brings it back to the default color that's set in the theme customizer. Button border width is the width around the button itself. So if you go up or down, it basically removes it at zero pixels. If you go higher, it gets thicker and thicker. So we'll keep it at two. The button border color is the color around the button. The border radius is how rounded the button looks. Zero would be completely square. And then if you wanted it super circular, you could go up to 20 and you can even go all the way up to 100 and it go at maybe even 500. Let's see what happens with 500. It doesn't really change. So 100 is about the end of that. So you can do better um, button letter spacing, which spreads out the distance between the letters. Button font, you'll want to set the button font um, to, the, to the font that you would like. And then uh, change out the button icon by clicking within the button icon. You can actually set it to where you have your specific a different button color. And you can also change the placement of the icon. And you can also only show the icon if you hover. So right now it's showing all the time. But you can set it to only show when you hover over it. So that's how that works. So those are the changes that you'll make to those individual menu buttons. And again, if you need help setting the link that's in there to understand what, um, how you need to set up the link um, to identify correctly where your visitors are going to go on your page because they're not, these aren't exactly pages. So this isn't a page, but services and get started are. But the frequently asked questions is not a page in itself. It's just a section on your page. So again, if you need help with that, it will be listed in the directions, um, the written directions on how to input the correct identifier on the end of that link. So moving on, if you want to change the background in the get in touch area, you just highlight that module settings, scroll down to background and input the color that you would like there. If you want to change the content, that would be in the text box in the body, and then you can put whatever you want. The design, you're going to change the border in the border area if you want to change that border that's around um, the get in touch box. So that's where that is, the design border area. And once you're done with that, if you want to change out this placeholder image, just click on that gear setting, click on the image, you can delete it, and then you can um, upload your own image or pull from your media library and click upload down here. If you want to change out this uh, text placeholder text area, it's just basically a tagline. So if you have a different tagline you want to put in, just go ahead and click on that gear icon. Uh, you'll see that the Text settings are set to paragraph. So if you want to change the font of this, you'll go to the design tab and instead of heading text, it'll be under text. 
and you'll put whatever font you want in there. Text color is found there below in the text color area, as well as the text size, the spacing, and the line height. Line height has to do with how far apart the words are um, stacked up. If you wanted to change out, uh, if you wanted to add a background color, you could do that there. Once you're done, click Save. Now, if you wanted to get rid of this icon, um, you could certainly upload your own icon. And the way to do that is click the gear settings area, highlight the icon and then backspace it and then add your own media by uploading the image or the icon that you would like there. Scrolling down this area right here, uh, the placeholder text, it's already set to have a copy that is applicable to your business. If you are a behavioral therapy service provider, if not, feel free to change it out. And if so, you can feel free to change it out anyway. Be sure to insert your business name there. This quality behavioral services, uh, therapy services uh, text font is set to something other than default. So if you wanted to change that out, it won't automatically make those changes um, through the uh, theme customizer. So just be sure to change that heading font if you would like to under the design heading text H1 area there. Now this contact box that's down here is a set contact box that I already have a lot of the settings done in there for you, but if you wanna make changes, I'll go over how to do that. So the first thing you wanna do is to, like I try, click on that gear setting icon. Now each individual field can be changed. You can add new fields by clicking this button down here. Now the name, so click on the gear icon. So the field ID, you don't really want to change that unless um, you, you want to go in and make changes to how it's going to be sent to your email address. So the field IDs, you really don't want to mess around with it unless you, um, like I said, want to make significant changes to the email that's coming to you. The title is what shows up here in this box. So if you wanted to change out that, feel free to do that. So contact name. Field options is it, you can change what type of field that it is. So it's currently an input field. If you wanted it to be a checkbox, you could do that. Um, so we're gonna keep it as an input field here. Making it a required field means they have to fill it out or they can't submit the form. I don't have conditional logic enabled here, um, but if you do know how to use the conditional logic and you have additional uh, uh, information that you need to put in there, feel free to do that by clicking there and then you can work through that right there. You can also get the information on how to uh, work with the conditional logic on the Elegant Theme support website. They have a comprehensive tutorial on what conditional logic is. So for our purposes, we'll just stick to how to change out the design settings um, for this page here. So for email, you'll see the field ID is set to email and then the title is email address. And the field option is set as email field because it's going to check and make sure that it's an actual email that is being put in there. So that's what that is. Now, let's see. We'll scroll down to this services area so that I can show you what that looks like. So the field ID is services. The title is which services are you requesting? So if you need to change that out, you could do that there. The field options, so these are the check boxes. We have it set to check boxes. You can change it to anything else, select drop down, radio buttons, etc. So the options are here. Um, you can change them out by just clicking on it and inputting the, the options that you would like, or you can click the delete button. You can move them up or down depending on how you want it um, listed in hierarchy. And when you're done with that, you just click that save button and it takes you back to the main form settings area. Now the title is if you actually wanted there to be a title above the form. Uh, you don't have to put anything there. I, I choose not to, but you certainly can. So the success message, that is what shows up after your client or site visitor successfully submits the form. So if you wanna change that out, you can do that there. The submit button is what is uh, the text within the button there. So you could, change it to that, you could change it to whatever you want. That's where you put that in. Now the email, you wanna make sure, very important, put in the email address that you want the submission forms to go to. Be sure, very important, be sure to fill this out with your email address. Now, 
the field IDs I was mentioning above. So these field IDs are already, I have it already listed in here so that when you get the email, it shows up, doesn't have all these percentages and this stuff. This is um, the way that your website knows to send this information. I have it already um, titled out so that when you get it, you understand what question was being asked and what their answer is in relation to. So these field IDs go here to let your website know to send that information in this line right here. So if you make any changes to these, uh, these areas, if you get rid of something, they say if we got rid of the phone number or the age. So if we deleted that, you would want to go down here and you just wanna go ahead and get rid of that whole line. That way you're not having an empty field that's coming over with no information. If you add a new field from scratch, so say you wanted to capture uh, general info. So we're making a, a field ID. So um, that will be the title. That was a mistake. So the field, the title, which is going to show up here, will go there. The field ID, we're just going to put general. You want to keep the field ID pretty simple. Um, you don't have to be crazy with it. Just uh, don't uh, capitalize it. Don't add anything um, super uh, extravagant. Just keep it very basic. So field options. We'll make that a drop down. Option one, so we'll just put the option one. And then if you wanted to um, add another option, option two, and another. We're going to make it a required field. Now, if you wanted to change the layout of this and you don't want it full width, so that's how that changes it. Full width, not full width. We will make the design changes as a whole, so you don't have to do anything for each individual box unless you want it to be different than the rest of it. So that, let's see how it's just changing this one box here. Now the, let's see. So that's how you change just that one box. So if we wanted to go back and we wanted to add this uh, new field, okay, say we wanted to put this, above. So we're going to move that up there. We're going to add in this email general info because that is the question that we were asking. I'm going to spell it correctly. So we would put percent percent general. That's the field ID percent percent. So that's what goes there. If you wanted to change how uh, after the your client responds, where they go to, you can actually put a whole, if you have a new page that you want them to go to or a different website, you can put that there. So when they submit the form, instead of coming back to this page, they get sent to a whole nother uh, page or website. You can put that there. Spam protection is this CAPTCHA here. Uh, if you have a protection service, you can add it there. So that is how that's done. I'm not gonna save those changes. So I'm gonna go back in there. Now I'm gonna show you how to change the design of the contact form. So under design in the main settings area where all these tabs are, I click design and click field. So to change the background color, which is how this looks now of each field, I click in there and that was too dark. The text color. Focus background color is the color that the, the input field is once you highlight it. So we could just change it like that. Focus text color is the color once this is highlighted. You can also change out the text. I'm sorry, the title text, if you actually have a title, you can change the settings there. Now the captcha text, you can change that down here. You can change the color of it. Uh, you can make it bigger. You can change the line height, add a shadow to it. If you wanted to change out the button, you can do that under the button area. And the background. The border color. And the font. Change it to whatever you want. So that is how that is done. If you wanted to add a different icon in there, you can. And if you want to change the button placement or only showing on hover, that is where you do that. When you're all done, be sure to click the save button. And that is how you update this contact form settings area. 
Now this area right over here is meant to show uh, your contact information. So if you wanted to change out this icon, you would click here on the gear settings, back, highlight and backspace and add the media or add the image or icon that you want there. If you wanna get rid of it, you just click the delete button. Now these contact boxes here, uh, they're just text boxes. If you're gonna make global changes or wanna make changes to each one of these boxes at once, you click to highlight. Hold down the shift button and left click each box until they're highlighted. Make sure they're all highlighted. Keep holding that down that shift button and clicking in the middle. You'll click this gear icon box. To change the background color, you click background. To change the design, um, to change the text font, click on the design tab, heading text. So if you wanted to change the text color, text size is here and letter spacing, scroll down, scroll up to text to change out the body text, um, font, color, and uh, the sizing. So let's see. If you want to change the text size. And if you wanted to add a border, just click that border. It's already rounded. Let's see. If you want to add a border to each of them. Um, so just click the border color that you would like, and the border width will be how wide the border is around it. So once you're done with that, click the Save button. I'm not going to save these changes, but you can. Uh, and also, if you want to change out the content, which obviously you would because it's just placeholder fake content, click the Content button. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope, got ahead of myself. Click the save button once you've made changes to all of the design settings. Um, and then you go back in individually, click the gear icon and input your uh, text that you want in here. The icons that are down here, they are um, free for you to use. They're included with your theme. But if you wanted something that was a different color, you would need to find your own icons and upload them yourself. And um, this is how you add the link to your each icon. Highlight the icon, click the insert edit link button, and then you're going to put in your Facebook username or business name at the end of that. So your business, whatever, you're going to get that off of Facebook, um, the link from your business page. So that's how you do that. You're going to want to put target new window. That way they can stay on your website and then just be taken to the Facebook website separately. So you're gonna do that for each uh, icon that's here. Insert and edit link, put in the URL for the social media site, and then your username. And again, click the target icon new window. And the same would apply if you were uploading your own icons here as well. If you don't want this here, you can click that delete button. So that is how you update the contact page.